Father, that is a confession of our hearts. That this afternoon you are God in us and among us. And Lord, because we have come and you are here, there will be a difference. There will be an exchange. There will be a turnaround. There will be impartation. There will be transformation. Because it is you. You are our God. You are here. We honor you. We exalt you, O oh God. This is your meeting. We are your people. Won't you do with us that which only you can do? We honor you and we celebrate you this afternoon. For this we do in Jesus' name. Let's appreciate the worship team even as they have their seats. And we can have our seats. I greet you in Jesus' name. It's so nice to see each one of you this afternoon. And I want you to feel that you are a guest of the King of Kings. You are his guest. And he knows the best to do with his guests. This afternoon, my prayer is that as you interact with the word of God, you're going to allow the word of God to shape you. You allow the word of God to transform you. You will allow the word of God to speak in your situation because God is in us and among us. Praise the Lord. I would want us to read from the word of God. We are going to read Hebrews chapter 2 verse 2. One, two, three. Hebrews chapter two, verse one, two, three. Can we read it together? We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have had, so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who had him. I would also want you to project for us John chapter 6, chapter 8 and verse 6 in Amplified Version. Or is it John 14, verse 8? I, I, I'm looking for the verse that says, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. From your Sunday school, it is John 8, 32. Thank you. Good students. If you can project it for us. And Yish, can you project it in Amplified Version? And you will know the truth regarding salvation. And the truth will set you free from the penalty of sin. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Our topic this afternoon is drifting from the truth. And in the verses we have read, there is one big question. How shall we escape? If we drift away, if we leave the truth that we have had. And let me start by saying this. A drift is a continuous slow movement from one place to another. Continuous but slow. And in our case this afternoon, we are talking about drifting from the truth. Drifting can also be equated with backsliding. It comes about when a Christian slide back into sin because they have believed a lie. 
Remember, we started by reading that we shall know the truth and the truth will set us free. In other words, we have already been set free. But I'm here to remind us this afternoon that whenever you attend a meeting like this one or you have conversations with God and you sense that he has set you free, I want you not to be ignorant about this one thing. That as you are leaving your prayer closet and you are enjoying the freedom at the doorstep, you will find your enemy asking you, can I have your hands? I want to bind you again. In other words, we all knew the truth, we were set free, but at some point, you start drifting slowly but consistently from the very truth. And if the truth is what is setting us free, you are actually drifting to your bondage one more time. This is not a new story. It goes back as far as the Garden of Eden, when Eve believed the lie from the devil, marking the downfall of the human race. Drifting simply means there was a time when you were closer to God. Then something or someone told you a lie. You believed the lie and therefore slided back. It can be a lie about yourself, your husband, your family, your lifestyle. You start justifying something which you are so convicted and you say, yes, I want Jesus to set me free from this. But with a drift, which we have just been reminded, it is a slow one. You have started warming up to the lie. You believe it and you move. And you move, and before you know it, you are very far. We drift from relationships, from commitments, every time our attention is wanting. And maybe you can project for us one more time where we led about the, uh, our, the attention. Hebrews 2, 1. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have had so that we do not drift away. Attention. We all watch the disciplined forces as they are called to attention. They stop everything else they are doing and they stand attention. Careful attention. No wonder they are called disciplined forces. You will not see a police officer running up and down when the commander is saying, attention. That one, I am yet to know what would happen. In another version where we read in John chapter 8, Jesus said, in another version, Jesus said, I am the only way to God and the real truth and the real life. No one comes to the Father but through me. In other words, if Jesus is the only way, the, on, the real truth and the real life, it simply means when you drift from that truth, then you have left the way, you have left the truth, and you have left their life. So when we drift from the truth, we move from the only way, the real way, and the real life. The real way may be the toughest. I want you to hear this. The real way may be not the easier way, but it is the only way. Somebody put it this way, that at some point, the cross was so tough, even the Bible says at some point, Jesus told the father, if it was possible, he removes the cup from him. But he ended up by saying, nevertheless, not my will but thine be done. Why? Because it was the only way. I am here to submit to us. Sometimes the truth is so tough. But fortunately, it is the only way home. You want to go home? Truth is the only way. 
truth, I know we are in a season where we are talking about that the many things have changed, strategies have changed, but I'm here to submit to us that the truth, irrespective of the corona season you are in, it is not replaceable. It is the only one where you cannot bend it, you bend it, it breaks. That one remains the truth. And the Bible says, Jesus said, I am the only way. It may not be comfortable, but it remains the only way home. The only way to your freedom. And whenever we are tempted and we drift away from the truth, the Bible has a question. It is not silent about it. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 28, it asks a very big question. Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? And maybe we can press it, just hold it. We can ask ourselves, can we drift from the only truth and remain the same? I am here to submit to us. It is not possible. It remains the only way. Truth, the only way to our freedom. And no wonder where we read in the book of Hebrews chapter 2, it asks, the Bible asks, how shall we escape from such, such a great salvation? Why? Because them days and punishment was assured. In those days when punishment, the message was brought by men, by angels, by prophets. But in the times we are in, the message was brought by Jesus Christ himself. And he told us with his lips, with his life, and with his death that I am the only way, I am the truth, I am the life. Brethren, I'm here to submit to us that heaven remains our destination. And that's why we cannot compromise the truth. Sin will always be seen even if you can explain it with a diagram. You know we are, not, we are at a season to make it easy and bearable. You feel you want to justify anything. Even if you explain it with a diagram and colors and markers, it remains sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Therefore, how can we escape from such? A husband took his wife and kids to the ocean for a week of recreation and rest. While they were there, they purchased a small inflatable boat for recreational use on the beach. One day, the wife jumped in the boat and launched out into the water to just lie back and soak in some sunshine. After what seemed like a short span of time, she opened her eyes and realized that she was several hundred yards away from the shore. In a panic, she screamed for help. Only one person on the shore seemed to hear her call, and that was her husband. When he realized her predicament, he immediately attempted to swim out to rescue her. That did not turn out well because he was soon in need of being rescued as well. Fortunately, the lifeguard was doing his job well that day, and he was successful in rescuing the husband and the wife by the time the wife. By the time he was able to get to the wife in a raft, they were nearly a half a mile from the shore. What started, I just want to enjoy at the beach, the sunshine. And she stopped, she stopped concentrating. Remember we talked about being very careful. Maybe I want to imagine she closed her eyes to enjoy the beach. When I read this story, it, it made me think about us, the story of us as believers. 
It doesn't take much time at all to drift so far from the show spiritually that one can scarcely even see the Lord anymore. I have identified a few key things that tend to cause Christians to drift away from God, which I would want to share with us this afternoon. A few causes. You can add on to the list, but I want to, us to identify very quickly a few things that cause us to drift from the, same, the very truth. Remember, that day, when you said yes to Jesus, your destination was heaven. Truth is the only way to heaven. Therefore, if you are going to heaven, then we have to maintain the path of truth. This reminds me, when we were growing up, the real Geshagi, if I this one year, city, whenever my mother wanted to slaughter a chicken, she would give us some, some maize. And then we would make noise with the maize seeds and get the attention of the chicken. And the, it's like they knew. You make a few noise, a few sounds, I don't want to make them hear. And then you would see them chasing to near where you are. You throw a few seeds and they are all busy eating. And while they are eating, you have already been given the instructions of the chicken to pick. By the time the chicken discovers, even if it tries to run away, I have already caught up with it. You know, some of you think I can't run. I used to get the chicken from my mother. And I want to ask you a question this afternoon. What is the devil using to get your attention in the recent past? What is it that he is getting your attention until you can almost forget that you are a believer? Number one, carelessness and lack of attention. Project for us, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. And the Bible repeats again. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Verse 16. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. And verse 17, the next verse, redeeming the time, okay, it has come, verse 17, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Very strong words from the word of God, don't be foolish. Let me tell you, when God decides to call you foolish, then you must be very foolish. Because his de description is final. And the Bible is very explicit. Don't be foolish. Pay careful attention to how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. The Bible has spoken many times about the way we walk, the way we talk. We may not read today, but Psalms chapter 1 talks about the way you walk, the way you talk, the people you sit down with. All those details, no wonder the Bible says, be very careful. How you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. Do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. So I want to ask you this afternoon. How careful are you with your work, with your talk, the company you keep? Because those are in that area. Remember, we are identifying the areas, how the causes of our drifting from the same truth. And we imagine we agreed it is the only way to heaven. If we do not vigilantly pay close attention to the word of God, we will fraught, like that story I read for you, we will drift away from God's word. And maybe we all know people that this has happened to them. And maybe
happy you are here this afternoon. You know it. It may not be written here, but you know you have drifted away. In, the, in your life or in their lives, there has been no urgency, no vigilance, no focused reasoning, no considering or fixing the eyes on Jesus. The result has been a standing still, has not been a standing still, but a drifting away. When you are not conscious, when you are not careful, when you are not bothered, yani you are just careless. I can assure you, you will not be standing still. You will find yourself drifting away from the very truth. The life in this world is not a lake. It is a river and it is flowing downward to destruction. Did you hear what I said? That it is not a lake. It is a lever. When you start drifting, you start drifting towards destruction. Drifting is a deadly thing in the Christian life. And the remedy to it, according to where we read, is to pay close attention to what we have heard. So what did you hear that day when you said yes to Jesus? What did you hear? What made you say, I'm standing out and I have received Jesus as my personal savior? Pay careful attention to that. Becoming so casual with the things of God, soon you become a casualty. But I'm praying because you are here this afternoon, it's because you value your Christian walk. How I pray, none of us will become a casualty. Course number two. Busy schedules. The Bible talks about in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 that there is time for every purpose under heaven. But I'm here to submit to us. Eternal values are not replaceable no matter the season. There is time for every season. But in all the seasons, eternal values are not replaceable. They are not debatable. Hence, where we read in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16, that we redeem the time because the days are evil. And I know you can agree with me that the days we are in, they are evil. One of the Satan's greatest weapons against our generation seems to be his ability to make good people like you and me so busy that we so often sacrifice the best things by spending time doing things are, that are just pretty good. That one, the devil has succeeded. He makes you so busy. By the time you want to have a conversation with God, the best you can do is just to sleep. And by the way, not that the things you are doing were wrong. Actually, they were not sins. But he exchanges them. Because he knows whenever you spend quality time with God, you leave that place recharged, refocused, reconnected with eternity, you come out there strong. So he'll make sure you cannot. You have no time to pray. Pastor Millicent will keep on telling us, plug into an hour convenient to you and engage the heaven. You are too busy doing many other things, which are not bad things. But remember I said, eternal things are not negotiable. If you desire to walk closely with God, you will have to begin by taking a cross look at your calendar. And I want to appreciate the fact that in your busy schedules, you made time to be here. Just to be reminded, not because you have drifted so that you may not drift. Because some of us drift and we go too far. And team, some of us, we cannot be even be rescued. It becomes too late. And therefore, this afternoon, could it be that your over hectic schedule is affecting your relationship with God? Take out your pruning shears and begin to cut out any activities that will not allow you to focus on your relationship with God. 
busy schedules. How busy are you? And by the way, the Bible encourages us to work. And if you don't work, don't eat. But you have to remain balanced. You have to pay careful attention. Otherwise, it may be too late. Number three, another cause. Discouragement, frustration, and desperation. Thank you for reading us in such a powerful moment of prayer. That they are, I know I could be talking to people who are broken hearted here. You are feeling so frustrated with life. You are feeling desperate. You are feeling like giving up. Oh yeah, I'm so glad that you are here this afternoon. So that you may know that is a trap of the enemy. Because he wants you to, to drift from the very truth. Satan uses his weapon of discouragement to drag us away from spiritual activities. When the trials of life cause us to become discouraged, he often begins focusing, helps us focus on those problems and take our eyes off the Lord Jesus Christ. When Peter removed his eyes from Jesus, when he had started walking on the sea, he started sinking. The devil knows. As long as he is able to take, to distract you, distract your attention, and you start focusing on your problems, he already has you. And I'm here to remind us, it is important that you know that when life's crowds grow dark and trials become fierce, it is the time to run to Jesus and not to run away from him. You are feeling so frustrated this afternoon, feeling so discouraged, it is time to run faster to Jesus because he's the only one who can mend broken hearts. Discouragement, frustration, and desperation. You can go and read a story in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 13 and verse 13. This is where Saul had been asked by Samuel not to give the sacrifice but wait for him. The Bible says, if you read the story, that he got so frustrated. He thought the Philistines were coming closer to him. And the people started leaving him. He felt frustrated and he decided, I might as well give the sacrifice. And one more, this is another incident where Samuel reprimanded Saul and he said, you have done a foolish thing. How many have drifted from the truth and have done foolish things? You meet people and you see the things they have done, you cannot believe your ears. Just being careless a bit, you find making such a bladder. But you are listening to me. It is never late. You can only make up. Another cause. Deception and lack of eternal mentality. Deception and lack of eternal mentality. The devil thrives in our ignorance. We all know the story of Job's wife. She coiled, the devil coiled the story. And Job's wife had the audacity of telling the husband, curse God and die. He di she didn't have eternal mentality. He thought dying from this body is death. And I'm here to remind you that death, that was just the first death. But the devil knew you die for cursing God, you are separated with God all the days of your life. So he will capitalize and de deceive you until you lose focus on eternal mentality. For example, the devil would want to whisper to you, even to commit suicide. We have read and we have heard in our stories. To commit adultery, maintain ungodly relationships. He offers shortcuts to enslave you with guilt and regret. He's ultimately leading you towards eternal condemnation, eternal separation with God. Remember, we started by saying, Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life. I, I said that we can compare drifting with backsliding. 
And in the book of Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 5, the Bible says, Why then have these people turned away? Why does Jerusalem always turn away? They cling to deceit. They refuse to return. Am I talking to people who, have ref who are clinging to deceit? And they are refusing to return. I want to plead with you by the masses of God. That this afternoon you can agree to return. Because we are assured we cannot escape from that judgment. Because when the devil makes you for focus on your frustrations, he will make you feel that God has let you down. You embrace the entitlement mentality. You start throwing tantrums to God. You start lecturing God and ask him where he was when bad things happened to you. You are asking God, where were you when I lost my job? You are asking God, when were you when my son started on drugs? You are lecturing God. You have forgotten who you are. Throwing tantrums like a baby. I am here to tell you that God is sovereign. So are you holding on fast to deceit? Are you refusing to return? Refusing to grow up? Are you returning to God of red? As if he's answerable to you. you. You know in the book of Job, one time he asked, I think it's Job 39, he asked Job, where were you? When I was laying the foundations of the world, I am here to remind us, sisters, that God is not answerable to us. He doesn't have to explain to you everything. But you humble yourselves to you, you humble yourself to Him. He is willing to lift you up. Humble yourself before the Lord, and He will lift you up. And finally, I know we can have many, but finally, quoting sin. Quoting. Many people begin to drift away from God because of giving in to sin and ignoring the voice of the Holy Spirit warning them. This is sad because God can give up on you. If you continue ignoring God, he can give up on you. You continue ignoring that Holy Spirit telling you this is wrong, stop. He might as well allow you to go on. Samson was warned, but he insisted. Remember, Samson was a divine provision. He was an answer to prayer. He quoted sin. He started enjoying having time with Deraira. And he would deny to Deraira. But let me tell you, he quoted sin, quoted sin, until finally sin caught up with him. And this time round, he told the truth, his hair was cut, he woke up and realized he can no longer do the things he used to do. The grace had departed. I am here to warn us, we stop quoting with the sin. Very soon you will wake up and let me tell you, it is true that the hair grew up. And he killed his enemies. But the sad bet is he killed the enemies and he was also killed. They died together. You don't have to die. You can make a return to God. Indicators of drifting. Maybe you're wondering, they look so far-fetched. And you would want to know, if you would want to know that you have started drifting. Number one, loss of interest on spiritual issues. These days you are not interested. Kuboe, katu, prayer, at Bible reading, meetings, DOI, my testimony. Sayuatani my testimony. You know? Aish, that is a, a red flag that you have started drifting. Loss of interest on spiritual issues. We say we come to pray, and you are wondering what are we praying about exactly? Kwansa yo masa, nani meshida job. Tena unataka ni kuja niombe. Ay, Pastor Millicent. Saa moja. Nimefika hata nyumbani. Hey, let me tell you. Therein lies your freedom. You realize you are no longer bothered? I wish you were praying and asking God to, to release 
release you on a Monday so that you can be able to engage God. To release you on a Wednesday and you can come. If you start, you are already very comfortable. You no longer even feel that it is your responsibility to come for a midweek service. You better watch out. We sing words. You hear words. Then we go home. Yet not, not really singing and not really hearing. Unaffected, distant, all the while our hearts feel a million miles away. And maybe you are actually there. Even now you are wondering, you are looking at your watch at Amaliza Sangapi. You are in the right place. I am so glad you are here. Actually, it is better you are here. You can hear that. Maybe we are not looking. And you are no longer aware. You are just enjoying the moment. Temptation pulls us into the long direction. Sin takes us under and before we even know what has happened, we suddenly realized we are stuck. We look and notice how far we have gone. Somebody made a quote and said this. Sin will take you farther than you wanted to go. Keep you longer than you want to stay. And cost you more than you want to pay. Sin will take you farther than you wanted to go. Keep you longer than you want to stay and cost you more than you want to pay. Remember we say, we all start with small steps, slowly, drifting. And like that lady who was enjoying life at the beach, when she opened the eyes, she discovered she can't see the rest of the family. She was already too far. Are you feeling you are too far? There is no place that the Lord can't get you from. Another indicator, if you want to know, you are drifting. Of late, have you gotten that critical attitude? All of a sudden, you are an expert fault finder. You better watch out. Already you have identified so many things here which are not working out and wondering, why did they put white flowers? They should have put more red, matching with the carpet. Critical attitude. Another indicator. Disrespect to spiritual authorities. Yani, you fear nobody, no nothing. You have forgotten that your spiritual authorities, you may be age mates, but not grace mates. Did you hear what I said? How I pray that the Lord would take us there. That we will honor that voice. And say, if it was God, then I will obey. And as I wind up, I want to talk a few about the consequences. The Lord has revealed, yani yamekukanya umekata. Unfortunately, if Jesus is the Prince of Peace and you have refused him, or you are drifting from him, it simply means as you grow further and further from the truth, who is Jesus Christ, these are some of the consequences. Feelings of hopelessness, helplessness, boredom, frustration, guilt, wrongness, emptiness, the list can go on and go on. Are you listening to me this afternoon? You are feeling hopeless. You are feeling helpless, bored, frustration. You have yawned and yawned. And we have just been here from two o'clock and you had taken lunch. Kwa hivyo hiyo, yawning ni akuboeka. Could that be a consequence? Loneliness, emptiness. Jeremiah 2 verse 19 in NIV. Your wickedness will punish you. Your backsliding will rebuke you. Consider then and realize how evil and bitter it is for you when you forsake the Lord your God and have no awe of me, declares the Lord, the Lord of hosts. 
you are backsliding, we will rebuke you. Consider and realize how evil and bitter it is for you when you forsake the Lord. Is it a wonder then, in Psalms 51, which we might not read, that David pleaded with God not to remove the Holy Spirit from him. When you drift from God, where when a roho mtakatifu muna biyana kwa heji. Si umekata, kumfuata. Muna achana tu. No wonder David pleaded, cast me not away from thy presence. Because when you drift, you are drifting from the presence of the Lord. Yet the Bible says that in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. God removes his presence. And this is the worst consequence of drifting from the truth. It is so expensive that you cannot afford it. Because even when you try to act like you are okay, when you sit down, you know you are not okay. It is that personal. In the presence of the Lord is the fullness of God. In the book of 2 Kings, there is a story which we are not going to read. When the ark of God was going back to Jerusalem, and David said it can have a stay over at a, brother, a certain brother's place, Obed-Edom. The Bible says that the brother prospered. Did you know you can only have real prosperity in the presence of the Lord? And when they discovered the way he has prospered because of the presence of the Lord, the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God himself. David went for it. I want to encourage you this afternoon that you can make a resolution in your heart that if being so close to God, therein lies my prosperity, I'm ready to pay the price. must pay the most careful attention so that we do not drift away from the truth. And maybe you are there and for some reason are spoken about your situation. You are fighting your, and by the way, you should be fighting yourself somewhere. All of us. Sawa, sawa. Because we want to grow from one degree of glory to the other one. There is a way out. The Bible talks about repenting and making a turn around. Call out to God before you are so far. The show, then you lose all the sense of spiritual direction. I want to read for you uh, something I came across. Because maybe you are saying here, you are saying, I did it, nobody knows. And then the, the poem is entitled, Absence of Evidence is Not Evidence of Absence. Absence of Evidence is Not Evidence of Absence. But maybe before we read, project for us Proverbs 28 verse 13 in New King James. Proverbs 28 verse 13. The Bible says, he who covers his sins will not prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Most guilty people don't admit that before, don't admit that before the court. Even if you know you killed somebody, you still want to look for a lawyer to try and convince the court that you never killed and you know you killed. They believe there is no evidence or enough evidence to find them guilty. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. There is evidence, though it may be absent before human beings who preside over your case. You may conceal, hide, or destroy the evidence that proves you are guilty. But you cannot do that with God. It's already in his possession. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. The Bible says in Numbers 32 verse 23, your sin will find you out. Repent before it does, either on this earth 
or on the judgment day. Don't say nobody saw you. Say you didn't see anybody. You can't be too sure nobody saw you. You could be shocked one day when someone comes up as an eyewitness or comes up with the evidence you thought it never existed. Don't try to cover up your sin. Own up, repent, and forsake your sin. Repent. Maybe Cain probably thought nobody would have evidence that he killed his brother. David should have repented on his sin of sexual immorality with Bathsheba. But he chose to engage in a cover-up by killing a principal witness called Uriah. He killed a very royal, dedicated, innocent officer. He didn't escape God's judgment for this sin, although God forgave him. I'm here to tell you, confess your sins promptly. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Psalms 32, verse 3 to 4 says, When I refused to confess my sin, I was weak and miserable, and I ground all day long. Day and night, your heart of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in a summer heat. Are you here and you have purpose to refuse to own up to your sin? I am telling you, I know. You may say nobody so, but God has that evidence in his possession. Isaiah 55 verse 7, as we wind up. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Remember, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Repent before the devil kills or destroys you. I'm reminded of a song I, I could remember my father sing only on a Sunday morning, once in a while. He would sing it in my mother tongue and he would say, you have hidden sin and you think it is a friend. When eternity will be opened, you will know sin was not a friend. Remember, the Bible says, we cannot start in the spirit and finish in the flesh, which is drifting. Climb the randa and confirm you are on the right radar. Hebrews 10, 39, and we are going to add up there. Hebrews 10, 39. I would that this would be the confession of each one of us. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. In another version, it say, it's, it, the same verse says, we are not like those people who turn back and get destroyed. We will keep on having faith until we are saved. Daughters in the house, this is my prayer for each one of you, that you'll make a confession, that you'll keep on having faith until you are saved. Remember, heaven is our destination. There is no time to court with the sin. There is no time to be too busy for God. There is no time to be careless to an extent that God can call us foolish. I pray that God can call us wise. May it be a desire of each one of us to hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful all the way. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, only those who endure to the very end will be saved. I pray that you be among those ones who will endure to the very end. Shall we all stand up? I know I have said many things. And I want to believe you, you have found yourself somewhere. And you feel you want to partner and agree with the Holy Spirit. Because I want to believe it is the Holy Spirit who pricks to us. As many as are read of the Holy Spirit, they are sons of God. 
So I know it is the Holy Spirit who has been speaking to you and me. And you feel there is an area you would want the Lord to help you. And you want us to make this prayer together. You feel there is an area you feel you, have sta you had started drifting. Or you are drifting. You are feeling empty. You are feeling guilty. You are full of regret. It is not late. The good thing about God, he finds you where you are. And he does not leave you there. This afternoon, he wants to remove you from where you are. If you are willing, if you lift up your hand, we are going to make this prayer and ask the Lord to cause us to be among those who will keep the faith until the very end. Let's close our eyes and pray. And if you want me to include you in this prayer, you can lift up your hand. Father, in Jesus' name, our hands are up. Mine is up. Lord, we are telling you, there was a day we met you and we were convicted, and we agreed, and we want to have eternal life. Our prayer this afternoon is that we are not going to drift because you have reminded us we cannot escape from your wrath. Therefore, our God, our hearts are up, that you would release the anointing for the moment to repent, to make a turnaround, and make things right. Lord, I know there are those things you have pointed to us. Maybe there is nobody who knows about it. We think it is such a secret. But thank you for reminding us that the lack of evidence, it is not evidence that we never did it. We own up this afternoon and ask for your cleansing and ask for your deliverance. Would you see the hands of my sisters lifted up, oh God? Because we want to grow closer and closer to you. We honor you, we bless you, because you won the children that you love. We thank you and we honor you for your word, because your word is life. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. And we sit, as we sit down, maybe you are there and you have never given your life to Jesus. We are talking about drifting, but you have never given your life to Jesus in the first place. Are you here? You don't know Jesus, and you'd want us to pray for you. If you lift up your hand, we'll see it and pray for you. Are you there? You don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, and you want us to pray together. If you lift up your hand, I will see it, and we'll pray together. Amen. Maybe you didn't have the courage of lifting it. Maybe that is a story of another day. The day I was convicted... It's not the day I got saved. I got saved a week later. Maybe you are there, you have heard the word. You don't have the courage. You can see any of these pastors, any of these leaders, and they will show you the way to the cross. The cross may be uncomfortable. Fortunately, it is the only way home. The Lord bless you.